right, let's talk about Dominion. Okay. You are the most beautiful woman in all of Vega. <laughs> Great. So we're done. That's all I needed okay, to say. Right. No. <laughs> Come back. Okay, Come okay, back. Okay, okay. All more, right. More. Talk to me about the rest of the season. What can we look forward to? Okay, so we're a little more than halfway through the season now. And some pretty big changes have come about, especially for my character, Claire. It's been a real coming-of-age story for her. And you see her at the beginning very innocent. And as the show progresses, you start to realize um, how flawed humans are and, and how they do different things to survive and how they cope in different situations and so certainly for my character um, by the end of the show you see a real political animal um, somebody who's learned how to manipulate who's learned how to get what she wants from the people that she believes she can't trust or have lied to her and that's interesting because at the beginning Claire is the only person who you believe is without flaws. You believe she's this intrinsically good person, but what's interesting about the story and, and the way it's been written is that you, you understand humanity and how we are flawed and how even the best people, the people with the best intentions, when they're given power, can become corrupt. Um, and and even, even though they think they're doing something for the greater good, it doesn't necessarily mean that they are. Which is, for me, a great character to play because she's evolved so much. And I think the audience will be receptive to her because uh, they've been able to sort of um, attach themselves to her at different points and they'll understand where she's coming from and everything that she's been through, which has been pretty traumatic. Yeah. Don't you think? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So... <laughs> Claire, who goes, as you said, from this innocent, you know, really good-natured girl to, yeah. to, I guess, standing up for what she believes in yeah. and, and somehow having to sometimes not do it the right way. Yeah. Do you relate to her at all? I do relate to her, and I, I think all young females uh, would relate to Claire. You know, certainly at the beginning, her life is um, sheltered, and she's grown up in an environment where she's been able to have everything that she can see that she would want um, you know within the time that she's in um, her father has protected her from the evils that are out there and she has this love this first love this great love this passionate strong love um, and she believes that's the only thing in the world that is important and then start then life starts to unravel for her and she realizes there's a bigger picture than just her and perhaps she might have to do something that will hurt her heart but maybe ultimately is is right for her mentally and so you start to see this rational person shining through and yeah i think any any young male or female can relate to you know, the, when you're a kid and then you go to university and you start to look after yourself and you have to make changes and there's nobody mollycoddling you anymore and obviously none of us are political leaders yet. <laughs> but, um, you know, we've definitely, all of us had to make changes in our lives that we've maybe not wanted to do. And, you know, whether that just be moving away from home and doing your own washing, whatever that is, it's, it's something that's changed who you are and you gain independence and strength of character and you gain clarity on the world. Um, so yes, I can relate to that and uh, I like her very much. So yeah, I wanna, I wanna believe that there are things in Claire, characteristics in Claire that I have. I hope that I would be as compassionate as she is. Um, I hope that I could be as rational as she is when faced with the awful situations that she's had to deal with. Um, I've actually thought about it. I don't want to say because there'll be spoilers, but I've, the, the biggest thing that she has to go through, I've thought about what I would do if I had to save what I believe saved mankind or, or take away something that's for my greatest love. Would I be able to do that? Um, yeah, <laughs> it's very difficult. Well, some people on on the interwebs have said that 
uh, it seems like Noma was the the true love of Alex, and Claire came in after. Do you think that that Claire and Alex are are the the true love, or, or is she someone? I, I think I think that Claire and Alex are the true love. I think that Noma and Alex had a relationship previously, and and they probably had a great love story. And I feel that you know for Noma, he is the love of her life. I feel that Alex and Claire have a more grown-up love. Um, you know, they don't have anything in common, but they've gravitated toward each other. So it's not just about being in the right place at the right time for them. It was something very different. Alex was prepared to die to save her. And that's a really big deal. Yeah. You know? Um, and she was prepared to leave everything behind, all the life as she knew it, to just be with him. Um, but obviously the reason that that stopped is because as an adult, coming into her adulthood, she felt that she had to go with the more rational choice. But there will always be a chemistry between them, and I think they're meant to be, but right, right now their paths are sort of not together, and... <laughs> I think they will keep crossing and they will keep overlapping until eventually maybe they're reunited. And I think ultimately that's what the audience will be looking for because they will see, you know, the looks, the chemistry. But for now, she's with Willy Wheel mm -hmm. and uh, he's being sidetracked. <laughs> All right, so we have confirmation that Willy it is... Wheel's father just looked at me. <laughs> We have confirmation that it is Alex and Claire for life, or Clalex. So. I'm naming it Clalex. Clalex. Yeah. Clalex all the way. <laughs>